There's more to the kingdom of God than just going to heaven or not going to hell. Yes. I just don't want to go to hell. I want to, or I just want to be the best person that I can be. You know what, Christian people? I'm, I'm not talking this morning to beginners. I'm talking to seasoned people. God wants to manifest Himself to us in this new year, this new coming year. And if you listen to Jews, Jewish scholars, and I'm not an expert in it, don't care to be. I'll listen to those who are experts in it. But Jewish scholars read prophecy and whatever their, their things are in, in the Bible and prophecy and their Jewish traditions. This next year, 2020, is supposed to be a, a highly significant year where that God manifests Himself to His people. Where that there is a fresh new richness of the presence of God with His people. And that's what Jewish scholars say. And I'm listening to many preachers even now today and those of us who have, who have paid the price and we've fought many wars over the years and over the years. Many preachers preaching that God is speaking to them and saying to them that this coming year and the coming years now, God is going to now once again pour out Himself, pour out His presence. And I'm here to tell you, in Lapway, Idaho, God is going to do a brand new thing in the coming year. God's going to do a brand new thing. If we are willing to go in, we must be willing to go in. Hallelujah. Into that place that God has especially for His chosen people. The other day I was watching the world's strongest man competition. These guys are mammoth. This one guy is six feet, nine inches tall, 441 pounds. Now, Goliath, who was the smallest of all of his brothers, was a foot taller and 100 pounds heavier. And Goliath was the smallest of his brothers. Can you imagine? I mean, this guy's just, he's like gargantuous. Well, the guy who won it is American. His name is Martin, Martin, um, Martin Lysis, L-I-C-I-S, Martin Lysis. I don't know if he's Greek or not, but I like the sound of it. Martin Lysis, and he won it. He, the world's strongest man. They asked him, you know, what does this mean to you? You know, and stick the microphone in front of his face. He can barely breathe, you know. And, and basically he said this. He said, you just can't understand what it meant. He said, every day this last year when I woke up, nothing meant more to me than to winning this prize than to win this prize. It wasn't a goal. It was a prize. How much does it mean? How important is this prize to you? It's so important that I'll give my life for it. How important are your children to you? So important that you'll give your life. How important is God to us? So important that we'll give our lives. Can you say amen? Yes, Hallelujah. You see, it's time to go in. Listen to me now. It's time to go in and possess the impossible. Before I get to this scripture, let me say this. I spent nine years teaching people how to go in to their thoughts, how to go into their minds, how to go into their hearts, how to go into their souls. And Christian people, or someone listening to this, both in this congregation on the internet, that it's time to go in. You need to get in, get into your own mind, get into your own heart, do an examination, get into your own soul. You need to get inside yourself, make an examination, get into your mind and your thoughts and dwell there for a while. Many people don't want to because they're scared of it. I had people who I would teach to do this and some of them would refuse because it was too dark. Other people, when they actually, through humbleness, allowed themselves to go into the thoughts of their minds and their hearts, would begin to weep and would be humbled and would be broken. And it was those people that were healed. I watched it. I saw it with my own eyes. It was captivating how the knowledge and the process and understanding of going in and Christian people, we need to go in. You need to go in. 
Listen, the last four, five, six years, for me especially, I've, got, I've taught an expert in this stuff. I've written two curriculums on how to do this stuff. And I've been more active of going inside, getting inside of me the last four, five, six years than I ever was before and than I ever was when I taught these people how to do that. And I think God knew that there was going to come a time where I was going to need those skills. So he put me in those circumstances to learn and then to teach so that the gospel of Christ might be made manifest more and more in this preacher. And God makes himself great in his word. Can you say amen? Turn now to Matthew chapter 17. This familiar story. Matthew chapter 17, let's begin with verse 16. And the dad of this young boy who was demon-possessed said, And I brought him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. Verse 17, Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither unto me. And Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Verse 19, Then came the disciples to Jesus apart later on and said, why could not we cast him out? You see, they were powerless Christians. Why couldn't we cast him out? There was a reason for that. Why couldn't we cast him out? Powerless to be effective when it's required. Listen to me now, folks. We're entering a year where the, there are many of us, if not all of us, we need to speak things. We need to speak things to loved ones, to friends, to neighbors, to whoever. We need to speak things to ourselves that the only way we can speak them is with more power. When we try to speak it, can't speak it. What does the Bible say? We talked about it in Sunday school. That when great power and grace came upon the disciples, they were witnesses unto the things of Christ. It's, almost, it's impossible to witness to somebody about the things of God without power to witness it. And Christian people, this coming year, I am challenging all of us to seek God for the power to speak what I need to speak to those who need to hear what I need to say. Listen now. Why could we not cast him out? Verse 20, And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief. You see now, unbelief went up in verse 17. He said, Oh, faithless and perverse. Why, were they, why did they have unbelief? Because they were perverse. The reason for their lack of faith and unbelief was, was because they were perverse. What does the word perverse mean? It means that they had their own agenda. They were in it for themselves. They were in it for their own glory. They had a wrong narrative. They had a wrong narrative about what it was about. They had a wrong agenda. Well, I'll try and cast them out. Yabba dabba do. Come out. Well, I didn't work. All right. James, you try it. Yabba dabba do me. Come out. Well, that didn't work. All right. Peter, you try it. You're, you know, you're the lead. Maybe you've got it. You know. And then he says what he's going to say. Twelve of them take a shot at this young boy. The demon doesn't come out. Why? Because it was all about who's greatest for them. Didn't have anything about to do with the kingdom of God. Didn't have anything to do with the blessings of God. Didn't have anything to do with God getting glory. It was all about their status. It was all about what they were going to get out of it for themselves. So because of your unbelief, verily I say unto you, that ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say, ye shall say 
ye shall say, ye shall say. You see, folks, we need power to speak like we should speak and to say the words that we need to say. And to this mountain remove henceforth into yonder place, and it shall be removed. And then I love this. And nothing shall be impossible unto you. Nothing shall be impossible unto you. That means that if you're willing to go in, if you're willing to seek the power, if the prize means enough to you, it's important enough to you to seek God and the power for that which you know should be said and should be done, then nothing shall be impossible unto you. You will receive power if you go in and you will be efficient and you will accomplish what God has told you and called you to be accomplished. That's what this scripture is talking about. Now when it gets to 21, how be it this kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting. Now we're not now you're talking about demons. You want to cast a demon out? That's a whole nother realm. But if you're willing to go in and just speak, speak even to yourself. Dude, you need to get your act together. You need to stop. Okay? You need to start. You need to focus. You need to pay attention. If you're willing to speak to yourself and go into your own mind and your own soul and your own heart and do an examination, nothing will be impossible unto you. Hallelujah. Listen to this next assertion, please. You see, earthly solutions cannot bring kingdom of God results. Earthly solutions cannot bring kingdom of God results. Well, if we're just nicer to them, maybe that'll work. Well, if we'll just give, give a little bit more, maybe that'll work. Well, if we won't, you know, if we, if we won't do this, then maybe that'll work. Earthly results. Earthly methods. Earthly solutions cannot bring kingdom of God results. Kingdom of God results require a seeking and calling upon the power of God. Means that the prize, that which I hope to be accomplished, has to be so important to us that I will do whatever it takes to pray and seek the power of God in the effort of accomplishing and achieving that prize. Somebody say amen. We must use spiritual, biblical strategies, solutions to get kingdom results. And I close with this. It's time this year. The word of God needs to go in you and I more than ever before. It's not just enough. Now, don't raise your hands. Don't raise your hands and respond to this. But did you this week at any time consciously, consciously in prayer, pray for our service this morning? Did you any time this week? Now, I'm not accusing you. You understand? I'm just talking. I'm just, all I'm doing is asking for you to listen. Amen? I'm just asking for somebody to listen. At any time this week, did I go through a process? Did we go through a process where I, on purpose, planted seed inside me? Read this, opened this up, and read it, took time out, and said, Oh my God, show me. Holy Spirit, show me the truth of thy word. And take this seed that it got in me. Not just take seed and scatter it out on the ground, but plow the ground and take a seed and on purpose put it into the ground, cover up that seed and then pray for it and water it with the Holy Spirit and ask God that that seed would bear much fruit. Say amen. Time for the word of God to go in and possess. I was talking with grandchildren this last week. 
even in conservative northern Idaho. LGBTQ students are literally taking over the schools of Northern Idaho. Signs in hallways, flaunting in the hallways, sexual acts taking place in the hallways. It is blatant and it is in your face. Christian people, Enough. Enough. It's time that it get in. It's time that I go in. It's time that this go in. It's time that we go in. Can you say amen? God's waiting. God's ready. God's prepared, are we?